get in the zone, break. Hi, we are SB19, and we're hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Is the reason why I choose the Philippines because we really highly respect the passion for the culture for the for the Filipinos and we, we found a lot of talented people in the Philippines. We know how to those K-pop superstars been made so that we want to implement the same way to those who has a lot of full of passions and with a lot of talent so that we wish that Philippine pop, he called it P-pop go beyond the K-pop in the future. Now, this beginning is very small like SB19, but if there are many more those type of guy who has a passion, who has a talent, then eventually through the, all the, over, the overseas Filipinos workers and all the English social media influence that eventually P-pop will be the mainstream of the, the worldwide culture. I'm not here to transfer the Korean culture to implement in the Philippine market. We want to implement the know-how, inspire the know-how to the Filipinos, Philippine people, so that the people will get to the worldwide, you know, the cultural aspect. Because when time goes, trends will change, and then we think that those guys like SB90 will get be the mainstream in the future. I'd like to ask the boys, Paano niya masasabi yung pinopromote niyo ang P-pop when actually, when I heard you sing even your Tagalog song, you sound like a K-pop group. Uh, honestly po, yung music po kasi namin, uh, galing po talaga sa isang Korean producer. Pero po, kasama po kami talaga sa music production. So kami nagbibigay kami ng feedback kung ano yung gusto namin mag-introg ng kanta. And uh, at the same time, yung mga ad-libs, sana yung sabi po galing, yung lyrics, kami po yung gumawa, sorry kami po gumawa. Hindi rin po localization yung nangyayari kasi po hindi na isa sa alang-alang yung uh, tamang pagbigkas ng mga salita ng Pilipino na word. Uh, at the same time, yung rap flow, kami po yung gumawa nun. Uh, siguro po yung sa K-pop side naman po na sinasabi nyo na tulog kami K-pop. Yung K-pop po na genre, hindi naman po siya solely, hindi, wala naman po nagpangyayari ng genre. Yung K-pop din po, influence po siya ng, influence po siya ng J-pop and ng American pop. So, yung genre na ginagamit nila, mong ba doon, uh, tawag nyo, mong ba doon, what else, parang, uh, yun katulog na po nang nasa, uh, kanta namin, yung genre po na ginamit, uh, Future House and Deep House, which is, ginagamit na rin po sa Western countries, ginagamit na rin po sa Indian countries. Siguro po, dahil ang, ang karaniwang uh, response kung bakit K-pop yung tulog namin, kasi po right now, ang sikat sa buong mundo is yung K-pop, which is hindi naman nabibigyan ng pansin yung ibang bansa na same genre rin yung ginagawa. So, bali po, ang pinapromote po talaga namin dito is P-pop, OPM. Pero po, na-influence lahat naman po, parang ang music po kasi, Ano po yun eh? Parang universal language din po yun eh. Walang may-ari ng certain genre. Kung baga, influence po tayo lahat ng yung music influence ng lahat ng mga 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 na sana po, uh, gusto po namin mawala yung tawag ng mga Pilipino na mag-try ng bago para po mag-evolve po yung music industry in the Philippines. You're not bothered by the fact that you sound like a Korean. <coughs> hindi kayo na mapakalag ng sa tunog nyo na hindi kayo Pilipino kundi Korean. Ah, hindi po kami na bothered kasi po, sa tutuwan. Kasi ako bothered ako. <laughs> pero, pero magaling kayo. Okay. I, I can say, no? Hindi ako magaling sa inyo. Bother lang ako kasi parang pinapromote nyo kasi yung Korean sound. Ang galing nyo nga, magaling, mas magaling pa nga kayo ng pinuntaan ng press pa nung gabi na po. Salamat po, salamat po. Pero nyo no, ano ang honest? You're, you're good. I'm, I'm shocked that I can listen to a Filipino group that can sing like Korean. With, with Tagalog words, of course. No? 
Salamat po lang iso. Hindi kayo nagbabother yung idea na parang hindi ko titingnan kayo na ah, Korean yung tunog nila pero Filipino sila. Siguro ako, ako po personally, hindi po ako nagbabother. Kaya na nga rin po ang sinabi ko, yung genre po, yung K-pop na genre po na sinasabi mo, uh, uso na rin po siya sa ibang bansa. Pero po, katulad ng BTS, nakilala po sila worldwide. Kaya parang, parang uh, ang, ang, ang response ng tao pag nakakalanig sila ng gantong tugtugin, ang K-pop yan. Even though, hindi naman talaga K-pop solely yung, yung genre na yun. Kung baga, uso rin siya sa ibang bansa. Filipino supergroup SB19 made its U.S. television debut Friday on Good Day New York there uh, with our Fox affiliates. So I do want to bring in Fox 5 New York's Lizette Nunez, who can talk a little bit more about that. It's a pretty cool uh, situation there to see them performing here in New York. Absolutely, Josh. So I think we probably all heard of K-pop, Korean pop, but P-pop, that's something fairly new. And I think it's starting to make waves here in the U.S., which is Filipino pop music. So we had the pleasure of having SB19 here in our studios and they performed. They also gave their first ever a TV interview in the United States, and they're going to be performing this weekend here in New York City. So let me show you what they're all about. Ah, uh, that's Pete Pop Group, SB19, with their song Bazinga, which Billboard reported surpassed BTS Butter for most weeks spent at number one on the Hot Trending Songs chart. The popular boy band from the Philippines on a global tour, they've made history becoming the first and only Filipino act to enter three Billboard charts early in their career. Their first English single, Why At, Where You At, has already garnered 4 million streams on Spotify. And Stell, Ken, Pablo, Josh, Josh and Justine, they are in the studio ready to perform for us. Here we go. SB19, take it away. SB19 making their U.S. TV debut on Good Day New York. The Filipino band is making waves, their success pushing them into the global pop market. And they are now on an international tour, making a stop in New York to perform at the Palladium on Saturday. We will be performing two of our albums, all the songs in there, so uh, they should get ready. And of course, this is our first time. We will make sure that it will be a blast. The band is made up of five members. They mix mainstream sounds with Filipino music known as the genre P-pop and becoming the first Filipino act to enter Billboard's next big sound chart. Their new single, Where You At, already becoming a major hit. We wrote it during the pandemic and you know, this song is all about reconnecting and finding peace and happiness within the company of your loved ones. And their fan base can't get enough. Dozens lined up outside of Fox 5 to catch a glimpse of them coming from near and far ahead of Saturday's concert. They're from Belgium. Yeah, Belgium. They, flew. Yeah. they flew. came that far just to yeah. yes. Yes. Some are from Canada. I didn't watch the concert in the Philippines, so I came here to watch them. Their music also putting a spotlight on Filipino culture, singing in both English and Tagalog. It's about telling stories. Like, Filipino music has always been like that. It always touches the heart. Helping pave the way for more Asian artists to gain international stardom while also highlighting their culture. Lisette Nunez, Fox 5 News. What's up, guys? Rob here from Front Row Live Entertainment. I am finally hanging out here in LA with SB19. Yeah. How's it going, everyone? It's great to be here. I'm so, so excited. excited. Yes, absolutely. I I've, I know the fans have been waiting for you guys to come to to LA. What was it like right. uh, performing at the Palladium in New York? 
Oh, well, of course, um, we were really, really nervous when we performed there because it's the first leg here in the U.S. So we just we we weren't expecting anything, but when we were on stage, we thought that it's going to be you know like bleak or something mm. like. But they were cheering a lot, and a lot of foreigners watched the show. So yeah. I feel like we're succeeding here in the U.S. because you know we're, I, we thought that uh, only Filipinos will watch, but. There are lots of foreign fans as well. You'd be surprised. Yeah, yeah, you'd we be were, surprised how many and, fans. And you the have. foreigner fans were shouting really loud. It, I, mean, <laughs> I could really pinpoint them in the audience. They even know our songs. They even know our songs. Yeah. The lyrics. Wow. Yeah. Even the our Tagalog songs. Yeah. They know the lyrics. They sing with us. Like especially the Mapa. Yeah. I'm so That's shocked. A big song. Yeah. yeah. Even the rap part. <laughs> yeah. They. 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 they yeah, oh my honestly, God. Honestly, yeah. Well, it's really, it's really special, and it's really something when. Uh, fans from different countries who mm. don't know anything about uh, the Filipino language yeah. sing our song and try to memorize it. It's it's really special, and uh, we're really thankful because they they had time to you know study and memorize the lyrics. So. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the current single right now. Where you at? Um, first ever Filipino. Uh, I'm sorry. First ever English track. Yeah. How different was it? coming up with this song and recording it at the same time just because it was I know you guys all speak English but it's different when you yeah. when you have that Tagalog mindset when you're recording or writing music as opposed to when you have the English mindset so what was that experience like in the recording studio I guess to this question I will pass it to the other members <laughs> Um, I think we, um, with recording the English song, it's quite different. You know, Filipinos, uh, we have this accent that we, we, it's kind of strong. Yeah. That we say words, it's kind of like, um, let's say... Like bulaklak. 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 <laughs> we op really open our, yeah. our mouth. But then with this English song, I think Pablo was trying to um, want us to sing that um, our words will be more comfortable to mm. to listen to like um he he wants it to be like you can just listen to it if, even though you don't really clearly understand the words but then you understand the feeling mm. the the message of the song i think that's what he's trying to do so for me i think the challenge for me is that the um, how I'm going to pronounce the words. Yeah. It's more on the pronunciation. I'm, I'm glad you touched on that because that was one of the things that I was curious about because there's, there's certain words or, or letters that go together in English that yeah. you can't really say them in Tagalog. <laughs> so, you know, as far as the creative process for this song, like, um, what was that experience like? Going into the studio, I know you mentioned, like, some of the vocalization was a little difficult, but how did you guys come together and figuring out, like, who was going to do what kind of vocal range for this song in particular? Uh, Pablo knows. Well, normally, since we have a different, uh, we have a wide range of um, vocal. Uh, Ken has the lowest voice, and then I'm I'm more of the middle ma man, and then he's like uh, low middle. Ah, uh, no, you're, I think you're the middle, middle, low middle, and middle to high, and then he's the high high. Mm -hmm. He has the highest voice, so I try to utilize that in the song in a sense wherein. Um, you could r really see the dynamics in the song. So there is a climax wherein mm. Sel would sing the high notes, and in the in the first part or in the latter part, there will be like low voices wherein Ken would uh, really shine. Mm. So I try to like place everything in in a sense wherein we could all shine together as a team. Yeah. Without you know consider uh without. Uh, risking the abilities of the other members yeah ken with the with the low kind of notes like do you feel like a song like this that has more kind of energy do you think like or did you feel like that was harder for you to execute in the recording process or even in the live show uh no because uh it's it's for me it's my strength and i yeah. uh-oh <laughs> uh-oh <laughs> has the hardest part mm. because he always has to set the the pace he set the tone the right? tone right so he always says that he's kind of nervous when starting the song he's always the uh, first one to sing yeah but now uh since i uh, since i've been doing that a lot of times and most of our songs i, I i'm in the intro part so i'm i think i'm confident now yeah than before so is is Ken always the first one to record vocals in the studio, or does it change? No, 
Um, depends on who's <laughs> who's <laughs> yeah who wants to do it. But um, sometimes I feel like yeah, I, I can do it. Yeah. yeah. Why did you feel now was the right time for another song? Uh, to be honest, I wasn't really we wasn't really thinking about like releasing an english song per se mm. uh we just release a song and it just happened that the music that we created is it uh, feels like the 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 language that should be used is english yeah so we didn't really think about whether it, could, it would be filipino or english sometimes we uh, use both of the language so, so we code mix even in our like in the in the sentence we try to incorporate english both english and filipino so yeah, yeah I, we feel like in this track it should be english right yeah. yeah it's more in the feel feeling and as far as the feeling goes when it comes to the choreography uh for s this song in particular yeah when does the choreography start to happen uh is this something that sh happens when you guys are already recording the song and you have the chore the choreography going you know on your mind or is this something that after you record the song you guys get together and figure out the choreography for me uh i i need to listen to music first yeah. before you know i make a concept or make because in our songs we need to make this um signature dances yeah. signature dance move we decided to um, make this the uh, what do you call this the si signature, the signature dance because it really fit the the lyrics the vibe and also the whole um, concept of the song. So yeah, I, th I think sometimes uh, the whole choreography would make sense once the lyrics is already there mm -hmm. because sometimes I let him listen to the music first, but you know it will be still different when there's already the lyrics yeah. so for example uh reconnecting he thought of it he he, he just thought of it uh, of this move mm -hmm. once once we recorded the the lyric reconnection yeah so wow. yeah i think it varies yeah you never know i just you just have to listen yeah, yeah and there was a time where i already created the choreography but then he added some instrumentals so i need to change the choreography <laughs> a bit just to you know to fit the the steps and the music together yeah. He's making it difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Should I not? Tigasang <laughs> ulo. <laughs> Always. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Just a little bit. Um, you, like, where do you feel like you felt challenged during this uh, entire process? And well, what was, like, what was some of your favorite moments during the recording process? Challenge? Everything is a challenge <laughs> to me. Life uh, is, life is uh, yeah, it's, well... I think the hardest part of the Wyatt. Okay, yeah, I think uh, yeah, and maybe the the time frame mm -hmm. for doing this because it was, uh, it's w usually we do it for uh, preparations for music videos, yeah. music recording. We have a lot of time in order to prepare, but for where you at, we had to do it in a small time frame. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot of schedules busy. Uh, with other stuff then we have to put it in the middle of our schedules yeah. so i think that's the hardest part and what else uh my favorite well the the shooting of the music video because it was a different concept it was a totally different concept and you know a uh, thing for us we time traveled and stuff so wow. we had we learned nice. roller skates and we had to wear some wigs do you feel like this song is setting the tone for a, an album for 2023 like what kind of and if so what kind of tone does that set is it like a more of an english kind of tone is it more of a the galog kind of tone is it a mixture of both it's always a mixture of everything mm -hmm. Because uh, every time we release a song or an album, we always try to be spontaneous. We always try to um, mix together all of the genres that we like yeah. and all of the emotions that we're exper experiencing. For example, um, I'd, I'd be asking uh, Justin De Joss, um, what 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 do you want? What do you want to include in our latest album, or what do you feel right now? Yeah, he will be saying, um, "I like to, you know, I like to create a love love song for my for a certain someone." Uh -oh. It's just an example. You know? <laughs> it's just an example. Then then I, I like this kind of tone. I like this kind of um, <laughs> genre. So then then I will build I will build from that yeah. and then 
other other members as well so i will be asking them for yeah. what they whatever they like and we try to like incorporate nice. that and try to like put that in one album so it it's a it's a group group yeah. effort now you guys have a difficult task of being the first of many uh back home the first with billboard charts the first for these kinds of media opportunities the first basically for a lot of things um how important is it knowing that you are able to represent back home philippines uh here in the in the states in in such a bigger kind of platform uh, and what kind of challenges do you feel that well when that we you? when we first uh started when we before we started our tour we were really anxious we were really worried that it might not work but then when we sp spoke to um Consul General Cato in New York. Uh, he's the Consul General of the Philippines in the in the um, uh, what do you call that? NCCA. NCCA Centro Rizal uh, um, uh, Consul General. Yeah, the embassy. Uh, yeah. yeah, we realize a lot of things that um, this is a responsibility for us. It's not. It's not something that we should be carrying on each other. Lots of pressure or burden. Um, it's something that we can be thankful for and that we because we are able to do uh, what we love. Sing and dancing, we are able to enjoy our career. But at the same time, we're um, able to inspire lots of people and motivate them. So, um, for all the Filipinos out there or all the all, all our supporters, uh, we just try to, you know, uh, create a, create songs that will really uh, give messages of hope. Uh, give messages of you know mo just motivate them in whatever you do in life and yeah just our whole the our whole journey or experience in life um uh, hoping that uh, it teaches them and or helps them in in their also lives yeah that's amazing well congratulations i really hope that this representation allows more of these filipino talent to come out um, most recently, it's been KZ that's been out here, yeah, Inigo yeah, that's been out here, Kiana that's been out here, uh, Ben and Ben. But it's like I, I think it stops there. It hasn't. There hasn't been more than that. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys break into the world yeah. and uh, yes. create more music. So SB19, thank you so much for hanging out thank with me. You, thank you. Guys, be sure to check out SB19, the new single, the first ever English single, is out now. It's titled "Where You At." And uh, thanks for watching here on Front Row Live. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so for much. having us. Thank you so much.